Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another video for you. Today is going to be kind of a lengthy one for this Labor Day of 2020 when I'm putting this up. Uh, it's Labor Day. It's a good time to celebrate the American worker. So these are all my USA made knives. Uh, just the modern folders, none of the traditionals or the fixed blades because I don't have many. It would be kind of non sequitur. So I didn't put those in there. Going brand by brand except for the onesie twosies. So I will timestamp those down below. I did not go through and get prices for each individual knife. I mentioned it when I thought I could remember it, but I, this would have been a really long video and a lot of research if I had to go through and, and find out all the individual prices. So uh, just keep that in mind. There are, like I said, there are timestamps down below to the individual uh, brands. So if you want to skip ahead to another brand, you can do that. You can go back and forth, watch it later in, in weird order, whatever you want to do. Hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed making it. I forgot how many American made knives that I had. It was it was a lot. I don't, I'm recording this afterwards. I haven't edited it yet. I don't even know how long it is. It, it might be an hour. I have no idea. So I hope you guys enjoy it though. And I'll see you at the end. Okay, starting out with a couple of brands that I was really surprised how few American made knives I have from them. They Both of these companies make stuff in multiple places and I thought I had mostly the American ones, but in both cases, uh, not so much. First up is Spyderco. I guess I've just been into the Tai Chung stuff lately. First up, you guys see this all the time. This is my size comparison Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This is the S45 VN Sprint Run with some excellent scales from Sharp Dress Knives. I believe these are called White Storm. If you want to go check those out, they are made, the material is uh, made by uh, Fat Carbon. They're gorgeous. I still have the green ones it came with, too. I'm kind of disappointed because I really like the texture of the green ones, but I really hate green, so I got these. But, uh, yeah, you guys see this in size comparison all the time. I'm trying to use it as much as I can because it's S45VN, but now I have another S45VN knife that I kind of like more that's probably going to get more pocket time than this. So probably not going to be using this a whole lot, but it's a great size comparison knife. Uh, next up, these next two are kind of interchangeable also as size comparison knives. We have the Para 3 Lightweight. Uh, this is the newer Spy 27 one. I had one of the previous ones before. I really do like the lightweight pair of three, and this one actually does get some pocket time. Again, it's same kind of thing. The Spy 27, new steel, trying to get to know it. Seems pretty decent, I will say that, but a really cool knife. I do like this a whole lot. And uh, yeah, it go I like the color of it too. The color is just better than the black. The black was kind of boring, and I don't know, looks cheaper. This just looks nicer. Action on this one isn't as smooth as my old one was, though, but still pretty decent. Next up, I blame this one, Metal Complex, another pair of three. I don't particularly care for the G10 pair of three. Never been my favorite, but got this Maxim at one. He was always raving about it. It's, he said it's still the knife he carries the most, even though he has a lot of the same fancy stuff that I do. So I finally bit the bullet and got one, and yeah, it is it is pretty impressive. I do have to say that Maxim at is, uh, is pretty awesome. I never had Maxim at, so figured I probably should. Did put a Casey Lynch deep carry clip on it, which is kind of required for these. Um, but uh, I do like the way it looks. I like that gray. I mean, I don't like the way it looks. It's it's not a pretty knife, but I like the gray. I like the color scheme. And I like how even the Maximet's got a little bit of a darker color to it than a lot of metal does. Uh, next up, we will do the Spyderco Shaman. I've almost sold this a few times because honestly, uh, I don't use it that much, but it is good for some videos. This is the second one I had. First one I bought at the original price and they kept jacking the price up and I got angry and I sold it, but then I got a good deal on a trade with a buddy for this. So, uh, and this one is from somebody's collector's club, not mine. I'm not in that. Uh, but yeah, 20 CV, but now they're 200 and some bucks. Yeah. And they're 205, something like that. It does have great ergos. It's a very good big beefy knife but probably not for that price some of the sprints are a good deal ironically but if you can get your hands on one and uh next up this one i do use a whole lot this is one of my favorite fifth pocket knives ever created the little native and it's another one that i had sold and and got another one um i sold it i thought they were coming out with a slip joint and i, I don't know if they ever did but if they did i missed it and i got sick of waiting anyway and i got another another compression lock one um Really, really cool little knife. Just great ergos for how small it is. And again, for your fifth pocket, it's freaking amazing. And lastly, of my American-made Spydercos would be the trusty, dusty, but never rusty. The original, my Mannix 2 lightweight. 
I've had this thing forever. It's kind of the knife that started the channel, honestly. It's the one that really got me into knives. I've done videos about it in the past. It's the old BD-1 one, one um, and I just, I just still really, really like it. I have said before, I kind of wish in retrospect that I got in the translucent blue. I think those are cool, but now this one has some history too. I said never rusty, but there are a couple spots on it. I inadvertently lied to you. I apologize for that. Um, but just superb ergos. I like the weight of it. And they're they're pretty cheap. They're not bad at all. I, I think they're like right around 100, something like that. Um, just a really great freaking knife. I love the Manix 2 shape. Better than the PM2. I need to get another G10 Manix 2. I've had a couple in the past and I've always wound up letting them go. But uh, this one is uh, this one's a keeper for sure because it has some history to it. I might get the Max Met one of this. We'll see. But... Uh, now, next up, we were going to go to uh, ZT and Kershaw. I only got three, which I'm really surprised by. I used to have more, but um, I still have a lot of Kershaws, but a lot of them are the are Chinese ones. But first, it'll be my only ZT. This is the 0562 tie. Uh, it's a hinderer design based loosely, not that loosely, on an XM18, but you're going to see a bunch of those later. Uh, just a fantastic freaking knife. I still think the best thing ZT makes, obviously, because it's the only one that I own. Um, I've been keeping an eye out, wanting some stuff, uh, you know, wanting them to come out with something. I want to have more ZTs. I like, I like them. I like the company, but just haven't had anything that really blew my skirt up lately. I thought the 0707 was going to be a keeper, but it turned out not to be. Um, after a while, it was the novelty kind of wore off, and it's still a great knife, but it wasn't something I needed in my collection. Making another 0609, I really liked that, and I missed it. Um, but other than that, I'm just there's just not that many ZTs that I'm super hot into right now. Uh, next up is a Kershaw, though, that I do really adore. This is the Bare Knuckle. This is the 20CV exclusive version from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They're about a hundo, and uh, you can't go wrong with this thing. It's just a great freaking knife. I had one of the originals, but they still make the 14C 28N uh, plain ones, and loved it. Love this one just as much. It's breaking in just as good as that one did, and uh, just love the Bare Knuckle. For 100 bucks, 20CV. American made. That's uh, that, that's uh, that's a pretty undeniably good deal. But I like the blade shape. I like the ergos. I like a lot of things about it. Uh, next up would be my only Kershaw automatic. This is the Launch Eleven. Just came out this year. Awesome, awesome, awesome auto. Uh, probably is going to make uh, one of my one of my top ten lists this year. I can't remember. If this is a little over a hundred or a little under a hundred. I don't remember. But um, really good ergos for its size. Still pretty small. A lot of the launches are pretty small. Um, I do like the new in-house design logo they use. It looks kind of Star Wars-y. I think it's kind of cool. That's on all the ZTs or the Kershaws. I just tried to close it like a liner lock because I'm an idiot. That's going to happen a lot in this video because I'll be handling a lot of handling a lot of knives in uh, in very quick succession. So I'm sure I'm going to try and lock or unlock them the improper way. But this is a really, really freaking good automatic. I I do really, really like the Launch Eleven a whole lot, and it looks really it looks pretty mean too. Very much like it. And now on to the Benchmades. Uh, first up is one that I've had on the channel a little bit, but uh, this is uh, one of those Knives So Nice I bought it twice things. I had a Benchmade Anthem before, that's what this is, and I loved it very, very much. Uh, but I sold it for silly reasons, and I managed to get another one, and I'm very happy about it. This is a fantastic knife. I've said before, it's almost kind of hard to call this a Benchmade. They are pretty pricey. They're, what, uh, 460 something I think. Um, but it is a full titanium integral. It uses an access lock, but a completely different one. It has a coil spring inside here instead of, I think you can see it down in there, instead of having the Omega springs that some people don't like. And it's just a beautiful knife. Love the way it cuts. Love the way it carries. I did change the pocket clip. I think the pocket clip on it is hideous. Uh, that is uh, the one change I made, which a lot of people do. This is an MXG gear bronze uh, pocket clip. And I will say on my previous one, it matched perfectly. On this one, it's close, but not quite. But uh, the bronze was a little different on my other one. My bronze looked more like that. It's really hard to get titanium bronze exactly 100% every single time. So not too freaked out about that. But there's that. But the Anthem, look at it. The noises it makes, the action, it's just freaking fantastic. Love it. Uh, next up, probably my most carried of my Benchmades. Uh, until recently, we'll get to the next one uh, that that I think is surpassing it lately. This is the Benchmade Super Freak. Uh, great knife. Love everything about this. I can't remember if it came with the deep carrier. I put that on. I'm pretty sure I put that on there. 
M4 steel. Price isn't too bad. They're like about 190, something like that for M4 and this really nice T10. That is not bad at all. It is a gorgeous looking knife. The Ergos are just so good on it. This blade is so good. I wish it wasn't coated. Other than that, really loving it. Uh, next up in the Freak family and probably the one that I do carry a bit more, at least currently, that would be the Mini Freak, the S90V carbon fiber version. This is not, I would say, as well priced. These are like 170 something. And for a knife this small, um, that's, that's a lot. Uh, but I will say it's not overpriced for S90V and carbon. The next one you're going to see is also S90V and carbon and costs more. Uh, it's just, and it's over spec. We just didn't need this. If they'd have done M4 and this, and, and, and uh, that, that same G10, even if it was a coated blade, I, I would have been fine. I would have preferred that. It would have been cheaper. I would have much more happy with it. Um, just a fantastic freaking knife. I did put a carbon fiber clip on it from uh, Etsy. I tried a deep carry clip, did not work at all ergonomically. It just jabbed right into my hand. But uh, yeah, the ergos are pretty good for a knife this size. I like it way better than the mini grip tilling. And you'll see I don't own a mini grip tilling anymore. I just, I never liked the ergos on the mini grip. Really like the ergos on this. Uh, next up, we will go with... The 940-1, this is another knife. I've had two or three of these, maybe even, I think just two, I can't remember. I've had so many 940s, but a great knife. It is S90V in carbon. They're about 200 thereabouts. Again, I'm not 100% with the prices on one of these. If I would have looked up every single price, this video would have taken three days to make. So, um, uh, but really great knife. I did put a bug out clip on it. I think that is the best clip for 940s. I wish they all came that way. I think the titanium one does. Somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that special edition titanium one they did came with that. Uh, but Ergos work fine with that clip. I like the little blue standoffs. Have had no desire to mod this other than the pocket clip. I did have that carbon fiber one on here for a minute that you saw on the Mini Freak. But it works better on the Mini, Mini Freak than it does on this, so went back to the bug out. Um, true classic, the 940 is. You always have to say it every time I mention a 940. Uh, next up... We have another one I recently reacquired. This is the Benchmade Saibu. It's just classy, and it even though it's a small knife, it does fit my hands well. I carry it in kind of a gentlemanly sort of role because it's just a really classy looking knife. I like the Coco Bolo inserts, not only on the scales, but also even on the thumb stud. Uh, 20 CV steel. I Nice G10 with those inserts. The bug out style clip, but this one is satin. Or stone wash, I guess I would say, instead of uh, instead of black. I uh, really, really, really love this knife a whole lot. Very glad to have one back. Very simple blade shape, which I like. Just a simple drop point. It is a, a great, great knife. And then next, we'll get into the bug outs. So in the full-size bug out realm, I have the... Uh, this is the CF Elite. So it's got the slightly stiffer scales on it, which they are slightly stiffer. They're a little harder to squeeze. You still can a little bit. Uh, S30V still, yeah, coated blade again, but this one does look kind of evil like that, so I don't really mind it on that this much. Bug Out is a great freaking knife. I've had a couple, three. This is the only full-size one I still have, and I do very much enjoy it. Uh, but I will be getting a custom one soon, so this may not be coming out. If you don't know, uh, they just put the Bug Out in the custom shop, so uh, this is uh, Labor Day when I'm recording this, and probably tomorrow morning I'm probably going to order a custom one, so... Uh, we will see. We'll see if this one sticks around or not. I don't need two bug outs, and uh, I just use it mostly for size comparisons, and I don't need two. The G10 one I would probably carry a lot more. That's an option on the custom shop. So, uh, And then next up, the mini bug out. This did used to be one of the white ones. My one big complaint with the mini bug out is the color combinations they chose. It was either orange with orange thumb studs or this black treatment with white scales. I think they didn't know that everybody was going to dye them. I did. I dyed them red. I was going to dye them purple, but somebody beat me to it and was all over Instagram. So I went Sith Trooper instead of Storm Trooper. So uh, I think it looks pretty good, though. They definitely, these bug out scales do take dye really well, especially when they're just plain white. It does make it really easy to dye them. I like the mini bug out a whole lot. It's when I first got it, I was a bit indifferent to it, mostly because of the colors. But now I now I'm kind of thinking maybe this size does make more sense for the bug out, but I'll amend that when I get the G10 full-size one, because I think it, the full-size one makes more sense in G10. So uh, that's it for the Benchmades. Bye. 
Okay, now we're gonna move on to the Hogues. So we'll start out with a Hogue Automatic. I have not had a Hogue Automatic before, so this is kind of cool. It is an OTF, it is the compound. Have not done a full review on this yet, but there definitely will be one. It's a Tanto. I like Tantos. You'll, you're gonna see that in a, a bit more as this goes on. Uh, I do like the G10 scales. It is an aluminum chassis underneath, but it's got kind of G10 wrap on it, I guess is the best way to describe it. And it is, I just like that. A lot of OTFs are very, uh, you know, they're aluminum, so they're kind of slick. I like this one. It has some grip to it. like that it's a Tanto. Um, it's, it is pretty cool. They do a really good job. I've held a fair amount of OTFs now, and I have to say the action on this is as, as good as any of them. It has the usual amount of blade play, but uh, it's got, like, about the same as a Microtech does side to side, but not up and down. I'm getting into a review. We want to get through these. These are right near the $300 mark, I think. Maybe a little bit less than that. $250 to $300, somewhere in there. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, nice deep carry clip. Very cool. Uh, next up on the Hogue, these are both about the same price, so I'll just grab one. At around the $140 mark, this is the Hogue Ritter RSK Mark 1-G2 Mini. <sighs> But yeah, I like the Mini a lot. I, I like the full size as well, but the Mini just, the Mini strikes me better. It, it's the one that stuck around. I've had two of the, the large ones and they both wound up going away. But the Mini I do enjoy quite a bit. It's, uh, it fits my hand better than a Griptilian. I'm just bagging on the Griptilian in these. Um, but, and I love how they do their Axis style lock. The Able lock is just, just outstanding. They do a really good job. Definitely, these these things are great. It is a Knife Works exclusive or Knife Depot Knife Depot exclusive, I believe. Somebody will correct me down in the comments. Um, but they always have them, so uh, go check that out. And next up, we have the Deca, which is probably my favorite Hogue. I love the Hogue Deca a whole lot. I used to have a uh, modified Warncliffe with the Blue Lava. I wound up getting a plain old one because uh, this is the drop points more more common, more popular. I thought I was going to be using this in a whole lot of comparison videos and stuff, so that's why I did that. But you know what? It's uh, it. I like I like the Warney a little bit better, <laughs> but but this is fine, and I I keep it and use it. I don't I don't like the Warney more enough to go and get another one. Uh, I just I just like the Deco a whole lot in any of its forms. It is a great freaking knife, very light. Ergos are really good. It has, like I said, that awesome able lock action. Uh, a lot of people go complain about the pocket clip. I have put aftermarket clips on this before. It, I, I think it was a Z, yeah, there's a ZT0451 that will fit this fine. But um, I, I don't know. I'm, I kind of like the regular one. Ergonomically and stuff, I just, I've gone back to, I always wind up going back to the regular one. And next up we have the TRMs, Three Rivers Manufacturing. Uh, first up would be the Atom. These are about 220. I have seven sets of scales for this now. Six. I sold one set of them. Um, it changes outfits all the time. These are, well, what do they call these? Techwood. The Techwood scales. They're multiple layered. They are gorgeous. Uh, I also have some of the more standard ones, like the the plain carbon. I have the carbon red. Chicardas stuff like that. Um, but I really do like these a whole lot. The Atom is just a fantastic knife. Uh, whenever I do one of those, there can be only one things. It makes it really far. I won it last year. It did. I don't think it did this year, but um, it, it came close. Uh, it is a just outstanding knife. Very, very slicey. Very light for its size. This is a full three and a half inch blade. Pretty good size knife. The only downside is it, it takes a hot minute to get one of them. You got to get on a waiting list and all that stuff. I would highly suggest you join the uh, Tycoons Really Matter group on uh, Facebook. That is the best place to keep updated on everything there. And uh, I would highly suggest you do that. It's, um, it's a, a great place to find stuff. As you're going to see in the next knife, the TRM Neutron. Uh, the Neutron was kind of, you know, this is kind of the knife that put them on the map, I think. This is the one that, you know, Nick Shabazz and I freaked out about. Um, it's just so slicey. Same basic blade shape and everything as on the Atom. This is just smaller. It's a three-inch knife. And it does not currently have the embedded liners like the Atom does. But it's going to. They're working on something called the Neutron and an EU-Tron, um, which I'm pretty excited about. I'll definitely be getting one of those. But this has scales from, speaking of the Facebook group, Match Anderson, who uh, has a Facebook page. 
like I said, best way to find them is search for that Tycoons, T-I-C-O-O-N-S, uh, really matter group, and join that. Um, he, these were very reasonably priced, awesome, beautiful looking wood scales. And also, there's another guy in there whose name escapes me. He doesn't have a company name, it just goes by his regular name, uh, who made this, this bronze, what do you make? He got, he gets the clips from TRM and bronzes them out, and the backspacers. And he does some other colors and stuff too. Uh, really cool Anna work, uh, but yeah, gotta go to the, the Tycoons group and, and you'll find him on there. I, I really apologize, dude, for not remembering your name. Um, I know it's long, <laughs> but uh, it was nice to have a Neutron back again. I didn't have one for a long time, and uh, it was it was cool to have one back again. And just an iconic, really cool knife. And next up is the Atlas. Uh, this is a pretty small, little one-hand open slip joint. I love this thing when I go to Europe, whenever I'm allowed to travel again. This is 2020. Who knows when that's going to happen again? Uh, this is my only knife I take with me because it's legal everywhere. The ergos are outstanding for a knife this small. Kind of reminds me of the Lil Native you saw earlier, which is a, a compliment. Uh, um, it's And it's just very slicey, great blade, S35VN. They're not too horribly expensive. I don't remember what they were, but they're not crazy. Nice deep carry pocket clip. And it's just a great little knife that ain't gonna bother nobody. Very. Okay, now we're gonna take a slight break from the brands, uh, the brand by brand thing, or do some little onesie twosies here. So uh, first up we have a couple from Drop, which I don't know where to put, you know, <laughs> Drop stuff, because they always have a million different names attached to them, uh, which this one is very typical. I almost put this in with the Protex, because it's made by Protec. This is the Ferrum Forge Design Protec made, released by Drop, Mordax. A really, really, really awesome knife. Button lock manual. You don't see that from Protec too much. You're going to see a lot more of it. There's another one coming up, and I've talked to them. They are going to be doing some more manuals. Uh, but amazing action. And just superb ergonomics, as you'd always expect from Ferrum Forge. They always, they always just fit my hands so good, almost all of their designs. A uh, nice deep carry clip, a typical Protec quality. Um, it's just a it's just a great knife. It has one flaw; it's a little thick behind the edge. I do know there's a guy that um, on Instagram that is uh, doing hollow grinds on these. I, I may send mine off to get that done. Somebody will mention down below. I can never remember who it is, uh, but uh, I guess it's gonna make it pretty hard to do it. So yeah, but I can look in my comments and find it. <laughs> there's always somebody in the comments who says so, but. Uh, Great freaking knife. Absolutely love it. 240, I think these were. Um, and I don't know if there's more of them or not. I don't know if they're gone or not. It's drop. So whoever knows. It's But it's pretty rare to see USA made drop stuff. But they did do another one. I think this one was actually first. This is the TJ Swartz Perpetua made by Millet Knives. It's Nitro V, which is a pretty unique steel. Uh, I, I do like that. I only have one other Nitro V knife, which happens to be a Ferrum Forge, the the new stinger. Um, but uh, yeah, I've always loved the Perpetua. They are great little knives, very basic. Um, nothing super crazy about the design, but that's not a knock. I like that. Uh, I, I like the gray G10. They come in a couple other colors, I do believe as well. And also Millet did a great job with an Axis style lock. It works pretty cool. And it's a Millet, you know, Millet's uh, used to be really, really expensive. I think they're mostly doing OEM work now and maybe fixed blades i can't remember but you don't see too many new like millet torrents or anything like that um but a great great knife ergos are really good despite the very blocky looking handle that they still work really well i like the jimping on it this is just a really good knife and it's one of those that every time i do take it out and carry it i'm like why don't i carry this more often you know it's just kind of it's got schmutz on it is that rust no nope, it's schmutz um but uh i love I, I just I just love this thing. I had one. I sold it. I put it on like I did a Christmas wish list video that was more for my wife to watch. But one of you guys bought me another one. Last time they were out, they were only like 90 bucks. I don't know if they're going to come back again. I don't know if they're still available. I don't know. But yeah, for the price. Wow. Really good. Even when they were brand new, I think they were 120. Not too bad at all. Uh, next up. Oh, let's let's grab this one because sadly, this is one you can't get anymore kind of related to the drops because you never know if you're gonna be able to get them anymore um this is a buck marksman gray ghost you can get a regular buck marksman with the aluminum handles and i believe 
I'm not even going to say this deal because I don't remember what it was or what it is on the standard wars. S30V maybe. This is S35VN and Gray G10. It was done by uh, SK Blades, uh, skblades.com. But unfortunately, it looks like Buck's not going to keep supplying them with their customs. They do really cool custom versions of Bucks and they had some amazing ones. I know that last I looked, the Inferno version of this, which is the same steel and same G10, but uh, has a coated blade and it's uh, orange G10. I, I believe those were still available. But uh, again, this is another knife I had. I sold, I got back in a trade and literally two days after I got it back in a trade, they announced they were, that Buck wasn't going to let them order anymore. So they're kind of almost, SK Blaze is kind of almost going out of business if, I'm, if I understood their Instagram message correctly. So, or the Instagram post correctly. But go there. They still have a lot of the fixed blades. And I believe they still have the Inferno version of this. But wow, this thing is cool. Awesome lock design from uh, Grant and Gavin Hawk, Gene G. Hawk. It's just so much fun to fidget with. It's just a blast of a knife. It really is. It's, uh, I really like it. Nice deep carry clip. Puts a smile on my face every time I carry it. You can adjust it for the lock tension and all this stuff. And it's uh, it's just a fantastic knife. It's just very unique and cool. Uh, next up, also also pretty unique, I would say. This is the American Blade Works uh, Model 1 V4. So I have to remember which one this is. So uh, I had a V3. It was okay, but the detent kind of sucked. But I loved the blade so much. And that one had aluminum handles. The, they're all now either carbon or G10. Uh, they definitely absolutely fixed that detent. And now this is just a great knife. They're not horribly expensive, somewhere in the 200s. And uh, S35VN. And it's just a really, really nice knife to cut with. It is very thin behind the edge. Very extremely sharp out of the box. These are all hand assembled and by one dude. And uh, he does all the milling and everything as well. Just completely handmade. Just awesome freaking knives. I mean, handmade with machines, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, just a fantastic freaking knife. Ergos are really good. This is going to be on a knife of the year list at the end of the year. I'm positive of it. The pocket clip on the old one was also a bit of a problem. This one still isn't perfect, but it's it's much, much better. Um, I would just like to have a bit more room for thicker pants. But other than that, it's a, a lot better than the other one was. But um. Now the action is just outstanding. Out the D10 is perfect. It's just absolutely perfect. So yeah, I'm very happy to see this improved. And awesome guy, American Blade Works. Uh, go check them out. And next up, another one from a company. I only have one of for now, but I think I'm gonna be gonna be getting another one because I know USMA Blade said they have um, some bad monkeys coming. Uh, but this is the Southern Grind Spider Monkey. I've told the story of this one before. I went to Blade HQ. They, uh, I did a little tour. I appeared on one of their, a couple of their Instagram videos and stuff. They allowed me to buy one thing at their cost. And I totally planned on getting something totally different. And then uh, Melinda, lovely woman who works there behind the counter, uh, made me handle one of these and I bought it. It's, uh, it's just a great knife. Nothing fancy. Just, you know, running on phosphor bronze washers and you know, pretty basic blade shape. It's a, uh, yeah, S35, but it's just a great freaking knife to actually use. And it's broken in so well. This thing has some miles on it and it is so smooth now. It's just ridiculously smooth and thumb stud detent is perfect. This is another knife that has been through some pocket clips, but wound up back on the stock one. I don't know. I just kind of, just kind of like the basic one. I know a lot of people really hate it, but uh, it's enough for what it needs to be. And uh, ergonomically, it works better than anything else I've tried on it. So this this has stuck around and will continue to do so. Uh, next up, we have the Microtex. So we're out of the onesie twosies, back to a brand again. First up, the LUDT is out the side, automatic. Uh, it, it's uh, purple, obviously. Um, I was kind of half-heartedly looking for one of these, and then I saw this purple one, and I snapped it up. I always say with Microtex, and I'm going to say with the next brand you see, uh, Protex, if you find one that's close to the one that you want, then get it. A lot of people think that Microtex and Protex are horribly expensive. They're not too bad. I mean, all these were all these were well under $300. i am not saying that they're cheap, but well under $300. But it's just, it's just finding the right one, the one that you want, is the hard part. Sometimes finding one at all 
is, is kind of difficult because some of the more popular models, when they come out, they all go really quick. But if you find one close to what you want, just get it. This is exactly what I wanted, but didn't know. Like I wasn't even thinking about getting a purple LEDT. And then I saw it and it was, I can't remember who, where I got it from. I believe it was GP knives. Maybe I don't remember, but, uh, it's just fantastic. And it's a pretty new one, March of 2020. Um, they have a little, little birthday on it, but very slicey blade, very snappy action. And it's freaking purple. So as you can see, I matched it to my background a bit too well. So when I actually feature this in most videos, I switch the background, but I wasn't going to do it for this, but, uh, cause it just disappears. You can't, you can't see it <laughs> like whatsoever, but, uh, this one does get some, get some carry, get some use because, uh, it's just, it's just a great freaking knife. Ergos are awesome. Looks are a bit, you know, I could take it or leave it other than the purple, but, uh, just a great knife to actually use. Uh, next up, well, we'll stick with the, the auto theme. Uh, this is a UTX 85 that was loaned to me by a viewer and he did mention he might be willing to sell it when he sent it to me and he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So again, this is close to what I wanted. I wanted one with some kind of color blade. I wasn't necessarily thinking red, but maybe red. And I, I wanted the drop point blade. I didn't want the coated blade, but you know, it's held up. This doesn't get a ton of use, but, uh, for what little I've used it. It's, it's held up. It's, it's not getting scratched up or anything. Um, I love the size of the UTX 85. Uh, the spring on this was really stiff when I got it. It's definitely loosened up a lot sitting here fidgeting with it a whole lot. So, um, I'm happy about that because it was pretty stiff out of the box, but, um, that, that was almost a, that's what she said. Uh, but the glass breaker, I'm not in love with having glass breakers on them, but they all have it. And I know there is a company that you can get a replacement screw that's not a glass breaker. I need to get off my butt and do that and stop complaining. But yeah, this one was made in 2018. I do not recall what the steel on this one was. 204P on this one. So, um, this Microtech does change steel year to year. So you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Uh, again, well under these retail are well under 300 bucks. And lastly, for the Microtex, this SoCom Elite, this took me a really long time to find this one. This is when I learned my lesson of if I find something close, get it. I finally did get exactly what I wanted, but it was 14 months of searching before I finally found one of these. This is a SoCom Elite manual with a Tanto blade, stonewash finish, black handles. Um, really took me a long time to find one. And then I found a, a site that had just, had just had it for a few months. Uh, Southern Edges, I've talked about them before. Um, yeah, they had just had one and I didn't, I hadn't looked there and I looked and found it. So this one's M390, uh, but oh, I love the action on these and just that noise never gets old. This video appears or this knife appears in videos all the time. And I always mention that noise. I'm never going to stop because, oh my God. Oh, that's just fantastic. I love the SOCOM. Yes, it is tipped down only, but you know what? It kind of makes sense for this knife. So, uh, don't, don't really mind it. And I, I normally hate these really grippy scale things, but it works extremely well on the SOCOM. This knife I should not like, and I very, very much do. Scale. And now on to the Protex. So here we go. We will start out with the Mac Daddy, the, the fanciest Protex that I have. They use some really fancy four digit price knives. I, I don't have any of those, but I do have a Harkins ATAC, which is freaking fantastic. And I'm very glad to have gotten one. They are limited production. They only do like, I think, I think it's 400 or something like that every four years. Uh, it is a very unique knife for absolutely sure. Cause you saw, I just opened it manually and it's a very smooth manual too if you just use it manually it just works like a regular smooth manual but if you know the secret you push down here on this upper scale if anybody hands you a, an atac and you want to look cool here's your little guide and now it's an automatic and when you open it as an automatic it closes as an automatic you have to push past the spring i just think that is super cool and it is never going to get old and it is also a very beautiful knife this one was 450. It's basically the most basic one. Um, basically the most basic. Great sentence, Bri. Um, I do like the milled titanium clip too. You don't see that very often on, on Protex, only on the higher end ones. And it's just a really great looking knife, great functioning knife. It's just, uh, 
154 cm steel, but um, I don't really mind that, um, even at the price. I like 154 cm anyway, and it's just kind of, that's what Protect does. If they started making a knife in that steel, it stays that steel, um, unless they go make a Dama steel variant or something like that. But uh, great auto and a great manual. It's really hard to be able to pull that off. Oh, and it's also got this really nice jeweled uh, thumb trapezoid on it, which I like a lot. Uh, next up, this is another fairly rare one. I can't remember what these cost when they came out. Uh, they're all gone of this version, but sometimes Protect does an operator series. The operator means this, all blacked out, no logos, tritium on the fire button. It does glow all the time. It's slightly, it's slightly nuclear, uh, don't, uh, nuclear, uh, don't eat it. Um, but, uh, it's, it's same as like you see on gun sites. It's, it's perfectly safe. They use it everywhere. Uh, but, it's, it does have this kind of fish scale pattern, which I normally don't love, but it looks kind of cool on this. It's just completely completely blacked out TR3. This is just the TR3 operator. They do it in a whole bunch of other ones. They've done it in the Strider SNGs, um, and I know they have a couple more coming. So uh, keep an eye out if you want one of these blacked out operator knives. I think this was the coolest one. I never had a TR3, and it's kind of one of the ubiquitous uh, Protex, so wanted to try it out. And um, it's just, it's it's evil. I just joke that this knife makes me 15% more badass every time I carry it. So that makes me 20% badass when I carry this knife. So a uh, very, very cool one. Um, next up, most of these are auto. There's one manual. This is the Protec Prometheus Design Vax uh, Invictus. Uh, this is a, a rare one with the just satin blade. They're, most of them are half coated. Uh, but uh, I love this knife in any of its forms. It is just very cool. It's not the sliciest thing on the planet, um, but the action's great. And again, now that we're into these, yeah, everything here is, I think this was a little over 200, but everything else is uh, is under 200. These, again, Protec is another company that people think are crazy expensive and just aren't. They're just hard to find. Um, it does have a safety on it. I've never used it except for in videos, uh, but it does have it. If you care about that, it's got the red fire button, which is kind of neat. I can't remember what the steel on this one is, or if it even says, that doesn't say. I don't recall what the steel on this one is, if it's S35 or 154, I, I don't, I don't remember, but um, it's one of those two, but she bangs, all the Protex do, they always hit really, really hard, and uh, I just, I like the look of it. I just think it's a beautiful knife. I did a video a while ago where I sketched a knife and it wound up coming out looking almost like an Invictus. And at that time, I don't think I even had the Invictus or maybe I'd just gotten it. And it was just it, like, this is just kind of a beautiful knife shape to me. I just, I just really, really like it. Uh, next up, another knife that is absolutely going to be on Knife of the Year stuff and is way up on the contender list as be the Protec Malibu. These are $199.95, I know, I remember because it's in my head because I know it's going to be on the on uh, the on one of the top lists, but I just beautiful knife. This is the Warncliffe version. Um, there is also a uh, reverse Tanto, uh, but uh, I just love the action on it. This one is the second production one off the line. Uh, the first one, I, I believe, went to another YouTuber. But um, just a fantastic knife, and it's just a great design. It's very light. It's 20 CV steel. So no worries about the steel on that. Absolutely outstanding steel. This gets a lot of pocket time, and it's just a, a just super easy-to-carry EDC knife. A nice, short, deep-carry clip. You'll notice on a lot of Protex, they have... They have pocket clips that are a bit long for my taste. I will say that. If I have one flaw with Protect that they consistently do is that they consistently put really long clips on pretty small knives. But on this one, it's absolutely perfect. And the action is just outstanding. It's really, sometimes flippers and button locks, the detent isn't always really good, but man, they nailed it on this. And on the Mordax you saw earlier too. Um, it just... Just a great freaking knife, and it's definitely going to be on everyone's top top twenty or top ten of the year. I'm absolutely positive it's going to be. Um, next up, we will do we'll do this one. Uh, this is the Newport. I've had two Newports. I had a very basic one, and then I got this one. I saw this. I always I like the Newport so much. I wanted a fancier one, and I really like this one. I cannot remember the uh, model designation on, but Newports are S35VN. 
This is one that has the pocket clips a bit too long. This is what I'm talking about. This knife does not need a pocket clip that big, but uh, I guess maybe it might be for ergonomics. Maybe, I don't know, but uh, it, it's just a bit much on the pocket clip. But uh, this is just kind of the plain aluminum sort of, and then a uh, little carbon insert. I think this is very pretty. If they make new ports that are like thousands of dollars that have just crazy custom stuff on them because it's one of their most iconic designs. Um, so they go nuts with their custom stuff. And uh, I like how Dave Warren explained it in a podcast that I did with him for Knives Illustrated a while ago that, you know, I just said, you know, if our regular production knives are perfectly fine, but if you want to spend thousands of dollars on one, we will allow you to, and we will provide you that value, but <laughs> we'll let you spend the thousands on one if you want. And uh, that's just kind of how their design philosophy is. But this is just a great slicey little blade, very lightweight. In this configuration, it looks very gentlemanly. Again, I think this was like 180. Um, they're not too crazy. And just the new ports, just a fantastic design. And again, one of the most iconic Protex. It, it, it really is. And got that Protex snap. They've made a few new ports. They kind of know what they're doing with that by now. Uh, and then lastly, we have the SBRs. This is a Les George design. Oh. Uh, some people call it, sh think it's short barrel rifle. It's a, it's short bladed rock eye is what it's actually supposed to be. But uh, cause the rock eye was another Les George design that protected that was bigger. And this is, this is shorter, but, um, S35 VN again. And this one is really inexpensive for a protect. I think these are like one, under 150, but this one kicks harder than any of this. The smallest protect I have, and it kicks harder than any of them. Yeah, this is the this is the one that begat the phrase she bangs when I talk about Protex. Which came from a song. Can't remember who. Beyonce or somebody like that, or no, it wasn't. It was a guy. I don't remember. But oh, love the SBR. The ergos are great. Also another knife I've had two of. I had a um a Protec at at a blade show. Last year, uh, obviously, that we didn't have one this year, Blade Show 2019, he, he, um, Dave gave me one, and it was green with the uh, acid wash, and it was cool. I liked it, but uh, I wanted black with a stone wash, so when this was available, I bought it and sold my other one. Um, oh, love how hard it kicks. Ass and now we will go on to the Spartans. Yes, I'm very happy to say it's plural now. Uh, I've, I had one for a little bit. I just got a second one. Uh, this was the first one that I got. This is the Harsey folder, which if you're going to buy a Spartan folding knife, I, I'd still recommend this is your first one. The Harseys are amazing. It is uh, $460, though. They're not inexpensive. But it's a full titanium frame lock uh, running on some fairly large phosphor bronze washers, and it does have a very glassy feel to it, especially once they break in. I will say I do agree very much with Matt Yoon, who ironically works for the aforementioned ProTech, but is also a big Harsey fan, or Spartan fan. Um, he said, don't adjust it, let it break in. And he was right. I did let it break in, and now it is just smooth as can be. I've since taken apart and cleaned it and stuff once it broke in, but that first initial thing, just let it break in. Just... Just flip it a lot and let it break in and it's fine. And once they're well broken in, and if you're not on camera, we'll see if I can do it. You can front flip these. We will see. There we go. Yeah, it takes takes me a couple of tries when the tripod's in my way, but I'm just standing around. That's I open it 50-50, front flip it or thumb or thumb stud it, one or the other. Now this is an S35 VN one. If you order one now, you can get an S45 VN. I think you may have to ask because I think they still have a few S35 VN blades left, but you'll see in the next one, the S45 VN uh, Spartans are available and they're, they're transitioning to S45 VN. So if you're watching this video in the future, it's going to be S45 VN, but it has the William Harsey signature on it. This is not a stock configuration, but it was a no cost option. I just called them and asked and, and they did it and they will do that for you if they have the parts to make a combo. So usually on their site, if you go there, this DLC coated handle is, a, is also a DLC blade. I said I wanted a stonewash blade with a DLC handle and they, they did it. So um, yeah, really cool. Love this thing very, very much. It's almost always on my most carried knives list since I got it a, a few months ago. And then I just got this one. This is the Palace. This is the button lock. Now, this one is S45 VNA, as you can see. Um, they, they said just to make sure to specify in my notes because they did still have a few S35 VN blades left. Action on this is ridiculous. This I did not let break in. I was going to, but I did take it apart. And in my initial unboxing of this, I thought maybe it was on washers. It is on bearings. I, I didn't know until I took it apart. 
Um, the flip on it's a bit lazy, but thumb stud is outstanding. And it drops button lock just like you would believe. Zero, zero button stick. Even that Malibu that I love so much, and even the even the Mordax, which I love so much, the Protect button locks are, it's not button stick, but you can feel a little bit, you can't feel anything in this. It just drops. And love that about it. Just a, a great freaking knife. Ergos are awesome. Carries a bit high in the pocket, but uh, the, you're going to see a lot more of this. Aluminum handles on this one instead of titanium. And these are like 285 I don't think that's a, a bad price to ask at all for S45 and USA made button lock. I don't think that's bad. Um, next up, we will do the Demcos. Another company I'm glad to have two of now. Uh, this is the newest one. This is the 8015. I did buy this used. I rarely do that, but um, they're not going to make any anytime soon. So you can get this as a cold steel. And the cold steel one is outstanding. If if, if you don't want to spend the money on the custom ones, this one isn't, a full, isn't even a full custom. This is an MG8015, which stands for machine ground. Um, so these are, I think when this was new, it was like 600 or something like that instead of like a grand. Uh, but this, these are actually made by Andrew Demko and John Demko at Demko Knives. And uh, it's beautiful. It has the, uh, these. Are, this is the brown micarta scales. I was glad when this guy offered, I mentioned I was looking for one, got an email from a guy, and this is exactly what I would have ordered if I ordered a brand new one and they were currently making them. 20 CV steel, and I probably would have ordered brown micarta, and then just the plain titanium on the scorpion lock. Scorpion lock, super cool thing. And it just drops shut. As I missed the thumb stud, it just drops shut. And it makes a great noise too. Keep missing that thumb stud today. Yeah, you can tell I'm an, I like, I like the sound of knives. I like, that's just cool. I do like the sound of it a lot. Ergos are outstanding. I like that the G10, well, this is my Carter, but the texture is a bit less aggressive than it is on the actual proper uh, cold steel one. I think the cold steel one's a bit much. You have to sand down underneath the pocket clip or destroy your pants, but uh, this one needed nothing. There, it didn't miss the thumb stud that time. Oh, God, I love this thing. Very, very pretty, too. I just think it's a gorgeous-looking knife. And next up, this is one that... This has been my definitely my most carried knife since I got it. This is the 8020. Again, an MG. I used to get the machine ground. This one was uh, 450 or something like that, or 425 instead of 825. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm just not spending the money for the hand ground blade because it costs that much more. And everything else is the same. It, an MG versus a regular, it's just, it's just the blade. And they're hollow grinds, so it's a bit different. This is a flat ground. This one is 3V steel. I was given the option for 3V or 20CV, and I, I have a lot of 20CV, so I got 3V. And just the plain uh, G10 scales. You can get it with titanium for a bit more money and a bit more weight. Uh, but uh, this is the Shark Lock, and it is just, Super cool. I mostly use it thumb stud, but yeah, it does have a deployment hole. You can get it without the deployment hole if you want to. This is one that they're currently making. I know they're sold out a lot of places and people say, when are they going to make them again? Well, that's not really how it works. They keep making them, but they ship them in batches to dealers. So it, just keep that in mind. But they are currently still making these. So um, just be patient. There'll be more, but love this thing to tiny little pieces um next up we will go to the chris reeves so we'll start out with my now only sabenza i did sell my large sabenza 31 but i still have a small 31 um i should have done this on camera it normally lives in this uh chris reeves slip because i took the pocket clip off because that's why i've never liked the small sabenza i've never found a pocket clip that worked right for me uh this is one of the Special edition ones. This is the night sky um, where the locating hole used to be. They don't have that on the 31, but uh, it's got a little mother of pearl thing. And it just has this really beautiful night sky. This was a gift from a viewer who I very, very much appreciate it. Um, it was when I was sick too. So it was very good timing. Um, great knife. I love the 31. People talk about the rock issue. I don't, I mean, I'm pushing this thing as hard as I can. I don't have any lock rock or anything like that. Um, didn't have my large either. I think a lot of that's just uh, a bit overblown, uh, but I won't get into that here because we'll be here forever. But uh, now the ergos are really good. I took the pocket clip off and got a, I got this filler tab actually from Chris Reeve. 
And um, also when I got the hat that I'm wearing and a patch and, you know, you got to get some stuff. I can't just call it order a filler tab. You got to order some other stuff. But it, now the ergos are really good. And I like carrying it in the slip. It's become kind of my classiest knife because it's just beautiful with that gorgeous little landscape on it. And this is a really nice looking leather slip. So this has kind of become my like classy knife. Absolutely for sure. And my other two Chris Reeves are both in Kosi's. We will start out with a small. Uh, this is the, uh, oh, by the way, I don't, I don't remember what these cost. I think they're like 500, 600. Um, this is the small in Kosi knife art edition. Again, right around that 500 mark. Uh, carbon fiber. It's just a carbon fiber slab on one side instead of the titanium. Uh, but it is made by Chris Reeve. This isn't something that like knife art modifies when they get it. It's made by Chris Reeve at the factory. It does not feel any different. I had this side by side with a full titanium one and I couldn't tell the difference action wise. Um, and I just like the look of the carbon better and it's a little lighter. So I went with that. Now you'll see this one, even though it is also a small Chris Reeve, it does have a pocket clip on it. I know that some people do say this small in Kosi. Um, you have to see if it's going to fit your hands right because they have these finger grooves and they're a bit unique. Uh, I actually found find this to be more comfortable than the Sabenza. So um, it's definitely with a pocket clip on it, it is anyway. So I, it actually fits my skinny little fingers really, really well. And this is a, a, a in single blade kind of sheep's footy thing, which I do like that a lot as well. And yeah, this is this one gets a lot of pocket time as well because it's just a nice small little knife and sometimes it's being carried side by side with my other Nkosi and this is one of my new babies for sure this is a large Nkosi Tanto with the brown micarta inlays also got this from knife art um this was 550 I remember because I, I paid for it so <laughs> I definitely remember that uh I, I like that on the inlay ones, the thumb studs aren't blue. That's uh, that's nice because that blue wears off fairly quick. Oh, my Kosi, it's holding up pretty good on my small Kosi. It has a Chris Reeve uh, deep carry clip on it, the milled one. Um, I really like those a lot. They are expensive. They're $80 for a pocket clip, which is a lot. But if you put the work that goes into them, I, I understand. And I, I just like, I think I like right now, I have never had one of the Sabenza 31s with the inlay, but I think I kind of like the Nkosi better at the moment. Um, I don't know. Again, the ridges just fit my hand well. And uh, Sabenza 31 has almost all the exact same. Like the Nkosi had those features first. So, you know, that ceramic ball interface and, you know, all that stuff. Um, the pocket clip being off the lock bar. And I just really like Chris Reeves Tantos. I like Tantos, period, but I really like the Chris Reeve ones. So, um, yeah, I. This is definitely my favorite Chris Reeve that I've ever had. This thing is just freaking fantastic. Do not regret spending the money one tiny little bit. Okay, now you knew it was coming. We're going to close out with the Hinderers. Uh, there's uh, there's too many of them now. <laughs> you guys know in this channel, I'm a huge Hinderer fan. I don't make any apologies about it. And I did not like Hinderers at all until, I don't know, a couple years ago. And now it's gotten crazy. So... Here we go with the first one. Uh, this is probably my rarest one, I would say. This is an XM24 Vintage. Uh, I named it Walt after my grandfather, who was, was, is, and always will be my hero. Great guy. This is 01 Tool Steel with a wooden scale, which I, I can't remember what kind of wood it is. I believe it's uh, maple? I don't remember. Um, but uh, it also has the... Uh, the kind of battle-worn finish with all the bronze stuff. Oh, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous thing. I do carry it. Um, like, that's the great thing about that. I can't remember what the, if this is, this isn't battle black. It was uh, carbonized or whatever steel. It's it's already looks kind of beat up anyway, so who cares? It's not going to get scratched up. And it's meant to be used. And uh, it's pretty rare, yeah. I think these were like 300, uh, or me, sorry, 300. God, sorry, double that, 600 brand new. Um, I paid, uh, I got a really good deal on it. I'll just say that. Um, I did buy it, but, uh, I bought it used and, uh, it was on Nick Shabazz's discord and, uh, I, people knew I was looking for an XM24 and, um, they, the guy had it on there for sale and somebody said I might be interested and he cut me a good deal cause I was me, which I thought was very, very cool of him. It is the, uh, Fullard Spear with the forward choil. I don't, a lot, you'll see a lot of no choils on here, 
but I do like the Choyo on the 24 because it's nice to be able to choke up, you know, because it is a big old knife. So um, it's a four inch blade. Uh, these are not as hard to carry as people make them out to be. It is, this is the only one of my Henders that's currently running on Phosphor Browns washers. They're all triway pivots, excuse me, meaning that you can change them. But uh, this is the only one running on Phosphor Browns because I still want to do a comparison between this and the Harsey that you saw a minute ago, the Harsey running on Phosphor Browns. So, you know, trying to make it even Stevens. But um, I, I kind of like it on the Phosphor Browns. It kind of fits the personality of the knife. So I think I'm, they may actually stay even after that is done. Uh, next up, this is the newest one that I got. This is the one that was actually in my pocket today. This is the Full Track. Uh, these are out of production and there are no plans to bring them back. Uh, there, he wants to do something similar to it. The last I talked to him, this was a long time ago, but uh, I don't know what. But yeah, these were these were 600 and it wasn't enough because the, the amount of work that goes into one of these things is insane. It's not as big as the 24. Um, it's kind of halfway between a 24 and an XM18, but it has a, the built-in tool, which I think is just so cool. I thought it looked kind of gimmicky, you know, when I first saw it, but it is, it, you can take the whole knife apart with it. That's all I used to take it apart. I did swap the scales. I, I had red ones that came out that looked amazing, but I'd already bought these for it. The scales arrived before the knife did. Thank you, U.S. Postal Service. Um, the, I would have been fine with the red, but the red or have been sent off to somebody to make some custom ones. So uh, this may be carbon fiber in the future, but I love this pattern of scales. I actually have a spare set for an XM18 that um, I, I will use someday at some point, but it's kind of nice to have one set of spare scales I like, because if a unique configuration of XM18 comes up, I know I, and it's in a hideous color, I don't care because I got a set of these to a set. They only have one, but you know what I mean. Uh, next up, we get into the XM18s. There are a few of these. Uh, this is my favorite, I would say. This is a non-flipper, uh, Fuller's Spear Point. This was a DLT exclusive, as was the scale. These were not originally together. This scale was on another previous XM18. I had just a basic, uh, you know, um, just a, a basic slicer grind flipper tab one. Uh, but I love this scale. I've also, no, I didn't change the hardware on this. It came this way. That's right. When I got this one, it is full battle bronze. The whole knife is full battle bronze. So I did not have to change, change any of the hardware. And I like having a little bit of the silver because the milled pattern on the scale, on the Warhog scale also looks a, a little, uh, it looks a little silver. So it matches up. Uh, I am starting to get some scratches on this scale, but I'm fine with that. Again, it's battle bronze. It's it's fine. If it gets beat up, it's still going to look good. Working finish blade. Um, I would not mind if it was a regular stone wash blade. I normally like prefer the working finish, but you can't get a battle bronze frame with a uh, stone wash blade. If you get battle bronze, you get working finish. That's just how it is. But my favorite thing about this is A, no flipper, so it carries better. And it's a fuller spear, so you can spidey flick it and thumb flick it with a fuller if you want to, which I don't know why you would, because you have thumb studs there, which work infinitely better. But uh, yeah, just love the non-flipper fuller spear configuration again. This was a DLT exclusive. Um, next up, this is also a DLT exclusive. Um, yeah, I'm going to be saying that at least one more time too. But uh, yeah, this is the Warren Cliff uh, No Choil. And again, a Warhog scale, but this time carbon fiber and full working finish. And this one I did get some black hardware for. Uh, this is the, I had to name it because I did a little contest with uh, Metal Complex. This is the War Pig. Um, and yeah, because it's a Warthog and, you know, whatever. Um, and the, the Black Sabbath song, and it's black. And I thought it was a good name. Uh, but it also has some schmutz on it from getting used too much. But uh, yeah, I do. I love Warnies. I love Hinderer Warnies, as you'll see again in a moment. There's another one coming up. Um, it is, and I like, I do like the no choils usually, but given my druthers, if I have to sacrifice the no choil for no flipper, obviously I would, I would take the choil and get rid of the flipper. But uh, hopefully maybe someday I'll be able to get a, a no choil, no flipper one. I, I don't know if they've ever made those. I, I'm sure they probably have at some point, but uh yeah, I do like this one a whole lot. And that's where that spare scale with the blue and the black came was from this one. That's what it came with. Um, and next up, we have a couple of XM18 skinnies. Uh, this is a very unique one. 
And the, this is from USA Made Blade. You can see the skinny because the S is just a thinner XM18. Uh, it came from USA Made Blade uh, because they are very good friends with Rick. And when Rick was the only one working at the shop during COVID, uh, he put some together himself. And they have, it doesn't even show them camera well, this little COVID-19 logo on them. And the card is signed by Rick Hinderer saying that he put it together himself, which is uh, just freaking cool as hell. Um, I did have to go find this scale. This came with a green scale. You guys know how I feel about green. I had one of these scales before, and I, I sold it along with my previous Skinny Skinner. That's what this blade is. Um, so I had to go find another one, but I managed to. But uh, yeah, and then also this came with my 24. It's got the Sasquatch thing from a USA Made Blade. I think that's cool because this is one of theirs. Um, this means a lot to me because I I had COVID, so it's kind of cool to have a knife to sort of commemorate my illness. So this will never go anywhere. It's just uh, cool. And I like the Skinny Skinner blade. It's it's good. Uh, this is the hinder that I probably carry the most. This is another skinny. It's just a no choil slicer, a DLT exclusive one. I really like the skinny configuration. And when I first started looking for hinders, I had in my mind blue G10. Because I'd just seen a lot of them in Blue G10. So uh, I got this one in Blue G10. And then I added some more blue hardware to it. Um, it's just a stone wash finish. It's not the working finish or battle anything like that. But it's a great user hinderer. And it, most of all the ones you've seen here. I'm sorry I've mentioned, been mentioning prices. Most all hinderers are 425 or 450 Except the ones I mentioned that were that cost more. Um, and the titanium scales and the aftermarket scales, they can get pretty pricey. I think that titanium scale, that Warhog one, is like 150 bucks. But um, uh, once you start modifying them, they can get pricey. But but you're going to modify them because it's, it's hinders. Make it your own thing. That's what you do. I'm still not in love with this blue hardware, but you guys seem to really like it. And I have nothing else to put it on, and I'm too lazy to switch it back to the regular. And uh, it's just going to stay that way. So, <laughs> uh, But yeah, I carry this one more than any of them. And then uh, lastly, another USA Made Blade exclusive. And this one, I don't know when you're ever going to see him again. I will say on the, if you've stuck around this long, I did see on the live stream that there may be a few more COVIDs coming back. So they may get a, they may get a handful more of these. So keep an eye out at usamadeblade.com. But um, uh, this is the half track warning that USA Made Blade only did. This is the only one I have not modified. And neither did USA Made Blade. I thought that this was their bronze finish, uh, but it isn't. This is the Hinderer Factory bronze and factory scale. I've just never felt a need to modify this one. I like it the way it is. I love the Warncliffe on this. It's just so cool. Um, there's a really good video with Rick explaining exactly how the cutting power works really well with a Warncliffe angled up like that. Uh, it wasn't just to make it fit in the handle. It also actually does help with the cutting performance. Uh, just a really cool little knife. And this is and this is probably my second most carried, I would say, probably. Um, just to really do love the half track and and I love this warning. It's just so this is like an evil looking little bastard. And if nothing else, I just I just like it. I like the bronze. It's great. But there you go. That is all my USA knives, excluding the stuff that I mentioned in the intro that I didn't include. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and sat through it. I have no idea how long this thing is yet. I'm going to stitch all these clips together. But uh, I will I will be there watching it with you when it comes out. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.